An aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets, in air or another gas. Aerosols can be natural or anthropogenic. Examples of natural aerosols are fog, dust, forest exudates and geyser steam. Examples of anthropogenic aerosols are haze, particulate air pollutants and smoke. The liquid or solid particles have diameters typically. Topic. Definitions An aerosol is defined as a suspension system of solid or liquid particles in a gas. An aerosol includes both the particles and the suspending gas, which is usually air. Frederick G. Donnan presumably first used the term aerosol during World War I to describe an aero solution, clouds of microscopic particles in air. This term developed analogously to the term hydrosol, a colloid system with water as the dispersed medium. Primary aerosols contain particles introduced directly into the gas, secondary aerosols form through gas to particle conversion. Various types of aerosol, classified according to physical form and how they were generated, include dust, fume, mist, smoke, and fog. There are several measures of aerosol concentration. Environmental science and health often uses the mass concentration M, defined as the mass of particulate matter per unit volume with units such as microgram per cubic meter. Also commonly used is the number concentration N, the number of particles per unit volume with units such as number per cubic meter or number per cc. The size of particles has a major influence on their properties, and the aerosol particle radius or diameter dp, is a key property used to characterize aerosols. Aerosols vary in their dispersity. A monodisperse aerosol, producible in the laboratory, contains particles of uniform size. Most aerosols, however, as polydisperse colloidal systems, exhibit a range of particle sizes. Liquid droplets are almost always nearly spherical, but scientists use an equivalent diameter to characterize the properties of various shapes of solid particles, some very irregular. The equivalent diameter is the diameter of a spherical particle with the same value of some physical property as the irregular particle. The equivalent volume diameter de, is defined as the diameter of a sphere of the same volume as that of the irregular particle. Also commonly used is the aerodynamic diameter. Topic. Size distribution. For a monodisperse aerosol, a single number, the particle diameter, suffices to describe the size of the particles. However, more complicated particle size distributions describe the sizes of the particles in a polydisperse aerosol. This distribution defines the relative amounts of particles, sorted according to size. One approach to defining the particle size distribution uses a list of the sizes of every particle in a sample. However, this approach proves tedious to ascertain in aerosols with millions of particles and awkward to use. Another approach splits the complete size range into intervals and finds the number or proportion of particles in each interval. One then can visualize these data in a histogram with the area of each bar representing the proportion of particles in that size bin, usually normalized by dividing the number of particles in a bin by the width of the interval so that the area of each bar is proportionate to the number of particles in the size range that it represents. If the width of the bins tends to zero, one gets the frequency function d f equals f d p d d p display style mathrm d f equals f d underscore p mathrm d d underscore p where d p display style d underscore p is the diameter of the particles d f display style mathrm d f 
is the fraction of particles having diameters between d p display style d underscore p and d p display style d underscore p plus d d p display style mathrm d d underscore p f d p display style f d underscore p is the frequency function therefore the area under the frequency curve between two sizes a and b represents the total fraction of the particles in that size range f a b equals a b f d p d d p display style f underscore ab equals int underscore a caret b f d underscore p mathrm d d underscore p it can also be formulated in terms of the total number density n d n equals n d p d d p display style d n equals n d underscore p mathrm d d underscore p assuming spherical aerosol particles the aerosol surface area per unit volume s is given by the second moment s equals pi 2 0 infinity n d p d p 2 d d p Display style s equals pi two int underscore zero carrot in a t n d underscore p d underscore p carrot two mathrm d d underscore p, and the third moment gives the total volume concentration v of the particles v equals pi six zero infinity n d p d p 3 d d p display style v equals pi 6 int underscore 0 caret in a t n d underscore p d underscore p caret 3 mathrm d d underscore p one also usefully can approximate the particle size distribution using a mathematical function. The normal distribution usually does not suitably describe particle size distributions in aerosols because of the skewness associated a long tail of larger particles. Also for a quantity that varies over a large range, as many aerosol sizes do, the width of the distribution implies negative particle sizes, clearly not physically realistic. However, the normal distribution can be suitable for some aerosols, such as test aerosols, certain pollen grains and spores. A more widely chosen log normal distribution gives the number frequency as d f equals 1 sigma 2 pi e minus d p minus d p 2 2 sigma 2 d d p Display style mathrm d f equals frac one sigma sqrt two pi e caret frac d underscore p bar d underscore p caret two two sigma caret two mathrm d d underscore p, where sigma display style sigma 
is the standard deviation of the size distribution and d p display style bar d underscore p is the arithmetic mean diameter the log normal distribution has no negative values can cover a wide range of values and fits many observed size distributions reasonably well other distributions sometimes used to characterize particle size include the rosin ramler distribution applied to coarsely dispersed dusts and sprays the nukiyama tanisawa distribution for sprays of extremely broad size ranges the power function distribution occasionally applied applied to atmospheric aerosols, the exponential distribution, applied to powdered materials, and for cloud droplets, the kurgian mason distribution. Physics Topic terminal velocity of a particle in a fluid for low values of the Reynolds number F D equals three pi eta V D C C display style F underscore D equals F R A C three pi eta V D C underscore C where F D display style F underscore D is the resisting force on a spherical particle eta display style eta is the dynamic viscosity of the gas V display style V is the particle velocity velocity cc display style c underscore c is the cunningham correction factor this allows us to calculate the terminal velocity of a particle undergoing gravitational settling in still air neglecting buoyancy effects we find v t s equals rho p d 2 G C C eighteen Ada Display style V underscore T S equals FRAC row underscore P D carrot two G C underscore C eighteen Ada where V T S Display style V underscore T S is the terminal settling velocity of the particle. The terminal velocity can also be derived for other kinds of forces. If Stokes' law holds, then the resistance to motion is directly proportional to speed. The constant of proportionality is the mechanical mobility B of a particle B equals V F D equals C C three Pi Ada D Display style B equals FRAC V F underscore D equals FRAC C underscore C three Pi Ada D a particle traveling at any reasonable initial velocity approaches its terminal velocity exponentially with an e-folding time equal to the relaxation time v t equals v f minus v f minus v 0 e Minus T Tau Display style V T equals V underscore F V underscore F V underscore zero E carrot F R A C T Tau where V T Display style V T is the particle speed at time T V F Display style v underscore f is the final particle speed v zero. Display style v underscore zero is the initial particle speed to account for the effect of the shape of non-spherical particles. A correction factor known as the dynamic shape factor is applied to Stokes' law. It is defined as the ratio of the resistive force of the irregular particle to that of a spherical particle with the same volume and velocity. Chi equals F D three 
pi eta v d e display style chi equals frac f underscore d three pi eta v d underscore e where chi display style chi is the dynamic shape factor. Topic: Aerodynamic diameter. The aerodynamic diameter of an irregular particle is defined as the diameter of the spherical particle with a density of 1000 kg per cubic meter and the same settling velocity as the irregular particle. Neglecting the slip correction, the particle settles at the terminal velocity proportional to the square of the aerodynamic diameter. Da v t s equals rho Zero D A two G eighteen Ada Display style V underscore T S equals FRAC row underscore zero D underscore a carrot two G eighteen Ada where row zero Display style row underscore zero equals standard particle density 1000 kg per cubic meter this equation gives the aerodynamic diameter d a equals d e rho p rho 0 chi 1 2 Display style d underscore a equals d underscore e left frac row underscore p row underscore zero chi right caret frac one two. One can apply the aerodynamic diameter to particulate pollutants or to inhaled drugs to predict where in the respiratory tract such particles deposit. Pharmaceutical companies typically use aerodynamic diameter, not geometric diameter, to characterize particles in inhalable drugs. Topic: <laughs> Dynamics. The previous discussion focused on single aerosol particles. In contrast, aerosol dynamics explains the evolution of complete aerosol populations. The concentrations of particles will change over time as a result of many processes. External processes that move particles outside a volume of gas under study include diffusion, gravitational settling, and electric charges and other external forces that cause particle migration. A second set of processes internal to a given volume of gas include particle formation, nucleation, evaporation, chemical reaction, and coagulation. A differential equation called the aerosol general dynamic equation (GDE) characterizes the evolution of the number density of particles in an aerosol due to these processes. N I T equals Minus N I Q plus D P I plus N I T G R O W T H plus N I T C O A G minus Q F N I 
display style frac partial n underscore i partial t equals nabla c d o t n underscore i math b f q plus nabla c d o t d underscore p nabla underscore i plus left frac partial n underscore i partial t right underscore growth plus left frac partial n underscore i partial t right underscore code nabla c d o t math b f q underscore f n underscore i change in time equals convective transport plus brownian diffusion plus gas particle interactions plus coagulation plus migration by external forces where n i display style n underscore i is number density of particles of size category i display style i q display style math bf q is the particle velocity d p display style d underscore p is the particle stokes einstein diffusivity q f display style math bf q underscore f is the particle velocity associated with an external force? Topic: Coagulation. As particles and droplets in an aerosol collide with one another, they may undergo coalescence or aggregation. This process leads to a change in the aerosol particle size distribution, with the mode increasing in diameter as total number of particles decreases. On occasion, particles may shatter apart into numerous smaller particles, however, this process usually occurs primarily in particles too large for consideration as aerosols. <laughs> Dynamics regimes the Knudsen number of the particle defined three different dynamical regimes that govern the behavior of an aerosol. K n equals two lambda d display style k underscore n equals frac two lambda d, where lambda display style lambda is the mean free path of the suspending gas and d display style d is the diameter of the particle for particles in the free molecular regime kn greater than greater than 1 particles small compared to the mean free path of the suspending gas in this regime particles interact with the suspending gas through a series of ballistic collisions with gas molecules as such they behave similarly to gas molecules tending to follow streamlines and diffusing rapidly through brownian motion the mass flux equation in the free molecular regime is I equals pi a two kb p infinity t infinity minus p a t a c a alpha display style I equals frac pi a caret two k underscore b left frac p underscore in a t t underscore in a t frac p underscore a t underscore a right c d o t c underscore a alpha where a is the particle radius p infinity and p a are the pressures far from the droplet and at the surface of the droplet respectively kb is the boltzmann constant t is the temperature ca is mean thermal velocity and alpha is mass accommodation coefficient the derivation of this equation assumes constant pressure and constant diffusion coefficient particles are in the continuum regime when kn the molecular flux in this regime is I C O N T four Pi A M A D A B R T P A infinity minus P a s 
display style i underscore cont sim frac 4 pi m underscore a d underscore a b r t left p underscore a in a t p underscore as right where a is the radius of the particle a, m a is the molecular mass of the particle a, dab is the diffusion coefficient between particles a and b, r is the ideal gas constant, t is the temperature, in absolute units like Kelvin, and p a infinity and pa are the pressures at infinite and at the surface respectively. The transition regime contains all the particles in between the free molecular and continuum regimes are kn approximately equals 1. The forces experienced by a particle are a complex combination of interactions with individual gas molecules and macroscopic interactions. The semi-empirical equation describing mass flux is I equals I C O N T 1 plus K n 1 plus 1 71 k n plus 1.33 k n 2 Display style I equals I underscore cont C D O T F R A C one plus K underscore N one plus one point seven one K underscore N plus one point three three K underscore N carrot two where I cont is the mass flux in the continuum regime. This formula is called the Fuchs Sutugen interpolation formula. These equations do not take into account the heat release effect. Topic. Partitioning Aerosol partitioning theory governs condensation on and evaporation from an aerosol surface, respectively. Condensation of mass causes the mode of the particle size distributions of the aerosol to increase, conversely, evaporation causes the mode to decrease. Nucleation is the process of forming aerosol mass from the condensation of a gaseous precursor, specifically a vapor. Net condensation of the vapor requires supersaturation, a partial pressure greater than its vapor pressure. This can happen for three reasons. Lowering the temperature of the system lowers the vapor pressure. Chemical reactions may increase the partial pressure of a gas or lower its vapor pressure. The addition of additional vapor to the system may lower the equilibrium vapor pressure according to Raoul's law. There are two types of nucleation processes. Gases preferentially condense onto surfaces of pre existing aerosol particles, known as heterogeneous nucleation. This process causes the diameter at the mode of particle size distribution to increase with constant number concentration. With sufficiently high supersaturation and no suitable surfaces, particles may condense in the absence of a pre-existing surface, known as homogeneous nucleation. This results in the addition of very small, rapidly growing particles to the particle size distribution. Topic. Activation Water coats particles in an aerosols, making them activated, usually in the context of forming a cloud droplet. Following the Kelvin equation, based on the curvature of liquid droplets, smaller particles need a higher ambient relative humidity to maintain equilibrium than larger particles do. The following formula gives relative humidity at equilibrium. R H equals P S P zero times one hundred per cent equals S times one hundred per cent Display style R H equals F R A C P underscore S P underscore zero times one hundred per cent equals S times one hundred per cent where P S 
display style p underscore s is the saturation vapor pressure above a particle at equilibrium around a curved liquid droplet p0 is the saturation vapor pressure flat surface of the same liquid and s is the saturation ratio kelvin equation for saturation vapor pressure above a curved surface is lane p s p 0 equals 2 sigma m r t rho r p display style lane p underscore s over p underscore 0 equals frac 2 sigma m r t rho c d o t r underscore p where rp droplet radius sigma surface tension of droplet rho density of liquid m molar mass t temperature and r molar gas constant topic solution to the general dynamic equation There are no general solutions to the general dynamic equation GDE. .Common methods used to solve the general dynamic equation include Moment method Modal, sectional method, and Quadrature method of moments, Taylor series expansion method of moments, and Monte Carlo method Generation and applications People generate aerosols for various purposes, including as test aerosols for calibrating instruments, performing research, and testing sampling equipment and air filters to deliver deodorants, paints, and other consumer products in sprays for dispersal and agricultural application for medical treatment of respiratory disease, and in fuel injection systems and other combustion technology. Some devices for generating aerosols are aerosol spray, atomizer nozzle or nebulizer, electrospray, electronic cigarette, vibrating orifice aerosol generator VOAG. Topic. Stability of generated aerosol particles Stability of nanoparticle agglomerates is critical for estimating size distribution of aerosolized particles from nanopowders or other sources. At nanotechnology workplaces, workers can be exposed via inhalation to potentially toxic substances during handling and processing of nanomaterials. Nanoparticles in the air often form agglomerates due to attractive inter-particle forces, such as van der Waals force or electrostatic force if the particles are charged. As a result, aerosol particles are usually observed as agglomerates rather than individual particles. For exposure and risk assessments of airborne nanoparticles, it is important to know about the size distribution of aerosols. When inhaled by humans, particles with different diameters are deposited in varied locations of the central and periphery respiratory system. Particles in nanoscale have been shown to penetrate the air-blood barrier in lungs and be translocated into secondary organs in the human body, such as the brain, heart and liver. Therefore, the knowledge on stability of nanoparticle agglomerates is important for predicting the size of aerosol particles, which helps assess the potential risk of them to human bodies. Different experimental systems have been established to test the stability of airborne particles and their potentials to deagglomerate under various conditions. A comprehensive system recently reported is able to maintain robust aerosolization process and generate aerosols with stable number concentration and mean size from nanopowders. The deagglomeration potential of various airborne nanomaterials can be also studied using critical orifices. 
In addition, an impact fragmentation device was developed to investigate bonding energies between particles. A standard deagglomeration testing procedure could be foreseen with the developments of the different types of existing systems. The likeliness of deagglomeration of aerosol particles in occupational settings can be possibly ranked for different nanomaterials if a reference method is available. For this purpose, inter-laboratory comparison of testing results from different setups could be launched in order to explore the influences of system characteristics on properties of generated nanomaterials aerosols. Topic. Detection Aerosol can either be measured in situ or with remote sensing techniques. Topic. In situ observations Some available in situ measurement techniques include Aerosol mass spectrometer AMS, Differential Mobility Analyzer DMA. Electrical Aerosol Spectrometer EAS. Aerodynamic Particle Sizer APS. Aerodynamic Aerosol Classifier AAC. Wide Range Particle Spectrometer WPS. Micro Orifice Uniform Deposit Impactor MOUDI. Condensation Particle Counter CPC. Epiphaniometer Electrical Low Pressure Impactor LP, Aerosol Particle Mass Analyzer APM, Centrifugal Particle Mass Analyzer CPMA. Topic. Remote sensing approach Remote sensing approaches include Sun photometer Litter Imaging spectroscopy Topic. Size selective sampling Particles can deposit in the nose, mouth, pharynx and larynx, the head airways region, deeper within the respiratory tract from the trachea to the terminal bronchioles, or in the alveolar region. The location of deposition of aerosol particles within the respiratory system strongly determines the health effects of exposure to such aerosols. This phenomenon led people to invent aerosol samplers that select a subset of the aerosol particles that reach certain parts of the respiratory system. Examples of these subsets of the particle size distribution of an aerosol, important in occupational health, include the inhalable, thoracic, and respirable fractions. The fraction that can enter each part of the respiratory system depends on the deposition of particles in the upper parts of the airway. The inhalable fraction of particles, defined as the proportion of particles originally in the air that can enter the nose or mouth, depends on external wind speed and direction and on the particle size distribution by aerodynamic diameter. The thoracic fraction is the proportion of the particles in ambient aerosol that can reach the thorax or chest region. The respirable fraction is the proportion of particles in the air that can reach the alveolar region. To measure the respirable fraction of particles in air, a pre-collector is used with a sampling filter. The pre-collector excludes particles as the airways remove particles from inhaled air. The sampling filter collects the particles for measurement. It is common to use cyclonic separation for the pre-collector, but other techniques include impactors, horizontal elutriators, and large pore membrane filters, two alternative size selective criteria, often used in atmospheric monitoring, are PM10 and PM2.5. PM10 is defined by ISO as particles which pass through a size selective inlet with a 50% efficiency cutoff at 10 micrometers aerodynamic diameter and PM2.5. 2.5 as particles which pass through a size selective inlet with a 50% efficiency cutoff at 2.5 micrometers aerodynamic diameter. 
PM10 corresponds to the thoracic convention, as defined in ISO 7708-1995. Clause 6, PM2.5 corresponds to the high-risk respirable convention, as defined in ISO 7708-1995. 7.1. The United States Environmental Protection Agency replaced the older standards for particulate matter based on total suspended particulate with another standard based on PM10 in 1987 and then introduced standards for PM2.5 also known as fine particulate matter, in 1997. Topic. Atmospheric Several types of atmospheric aerosol have a significant effect on Earth's climate, volcanic, desert dust, sea salt, that originating from biogenic sources and human-made. Volcanic aerosol forms in the stratosphere after an eruption as droplets of sulfuric acid that can prevail for up to two years, and reflect sunlight, lowering temperature. Desert dust, mineral particles blown to high altitudes, absorb heat and may be responsible for inhibiting storm cloud formation. Human-made sulfate aerosols, primarily from burning oil and coal, affect the behavior of clouds, although all hydrometeors, solid and liquid, can be described as aerosols. A distinction is commonly made between such dispersions, i.e., clouds containing activated drops and crystals, and aerosol particles. The atmosphere of Earth contains aerosols of various types and concentrations, including quantities of natural inorganic materials, fine dust, sea salt, or water droplets, natural organic materials, smoke, pollen, spores, or bacteria, anthropogenic products of combustion such as smoke, ashes, or dust. Aerosols can be found in urban ecosystems in various forms, for example, Dust Cigarette smoke Mist from aerosol spray cans Soot or fumes in car exhaust The presence of aerosols in the Earth's atmosphere can influence its climate, as well as human health. Effects <laughs> 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 Volcanic eruptions release large amounts of sulfuric acid, hydrogen sulfide and hydrochloric acid into the atmosphere. These gases represent aerosols and eventually return to Earth as acid rain, having a number of adverse effects on the environment and human life. Aerosols interact with the Earth's energy budget in two ways, directly and indirectly e.g., a direct effect is that aerosols scatter and absorb incoming solar radiation. This will mainly lead to a cooling of the surface solar radiation is scattered back to space but may also contribute to a warming of the surface caused by the absorption of incoming solar energy. This will be an additional element to the greenhouse effect and therefore contributing to the global climate change. The indirect effects refer to the aerosols interfering with formations that interact directly with radiation. For example, they are able to modify the size of the cloud particles in the lower atmosphere, thereby changing the way clouds reflect and absorb light and therefore modifying the Earth's energy budget. When aerosols absorb pollutants, it facilitates the deposition of pollutants to the surface of the Earth as well as to bodies of water. This has the potential to be damaging to both the environment and human health. Aerosol particles with an effective diameter smaller than 10 micrometers can enter the bronchi, while the ones with an effective diameter smaller than 2.5 micrometers can enter as far as the gas exchange region in the lungs, which can be hazardous to human health. Topic. See also Nebulizer Aerogel Aerosol spray, the spraying device Bioaerosol Atmospheric particulate matter Deposition aerosol physics Cloud